hello friends welcome to engineering tutorial so we'll continue our discussion with uh, the subject of electrical machines and our topic of discussion which is transformers so we have discussed about the basic introductory concepts about ideal transformer under no load and loaded conditions so in this video we are going to discuss about practical transformer okay basic concepts so i want you to watch the previous videos related to transformers first and also about coupled circuits and ac networks related to phasor diagram and also some basic introductory concepts related to magnetic circuits such as flux mmf reluctance i have already posted that video long ago i think 3 or 4 months back so please it is there in the electrical machines playlist so please check out those videos first and then watch this video so that uh, you have a good understanding and if you know have some idea about those things then you can watch this video directly okay so just a quick look ideal transformer so transformer we know it is a basic energy conversion device uh, in which the ac supply input is uh, it can either be increased or decrease with a corresponding increase or decrease in current and there is no electrical connection between the input side and the output side it all happens through magnetic flux flux linkages and it operates on the principle of faraday's law of electromagnetic induction and lenz's law we have discussed about ideal transformer just a quick uh, look at it so an ideal transformer is one which has no winding resistance no leakage flux and no iron losses so we have an ideal transformer here basic design of a transformer laminated magnetic core primary winding secondary winding ac supply input is connected across the primary winding because of the current flow through the primary winding a flux is set up this flux which links with both the primary and the secondary winding that is the useful flux that is called as primary flux or mutual flux and because of this flux linkage emf is induced in both the primary and the secondary windings as per faraday's law of electromagnetic induction and that is the general concept so this is ideal transformer it means the primary windings it does not have any resistance associated with it it is pure inductor okay in ideal transformer also there is no leakage flux leakage flux i have already discussed in coupled circuits so leakage flux is that flux produced in a particular winding that does not link with the other winding and only links with itself mutual flux is that flux produced in the winding that links with the other winding the common flux this is the common flux here so in ideal transformer all of the flux that is generated links with both the windings but in actual it is not that there will be leakage flux and also in ideal transformer there are no iron losses that is eddy currents and hysteresis losses but in practical transformer it happens so it is impossible to design an ideal transformer we only use it to have a reference a reference model to compare and ana analyze the performance of actual transformers uh is just a reference model for us okay so this is the uh, phasor diagram for an ideal transformer in no load condition practical transformer so practical transformer is the opposite or the different from ideal transformer because it has all these things it has winding resistance it has leakage flux it has eddy currents and hysteresis losses called as iron losses so both at the primary and the secondary winding there will be resistance values associated with it okay so the primary and the secondary windings can be visualized as a simple rl circuit it will have some amount of resistance and the inductance of the coil but in uh, ideal transformer it is only inductance no resistance but in practical practical transformer it is rl 
okay RL combination then we have the leakage flux it is because of the leakage reactances so both these reactances are produced uh, you know the leakage flux so in general in ideal transformer it is assumed that all the flux that is generated in the primary winding links with the secondary winding all the flux that is generated in the secondary winding links with the primary winding so total there is only common flux or mutual flux but in reality is not like that the flux that only links with the winding itself like it is here okay the flux generated in this primary winding is linking with itself the flux generated in the secondary winding is linking with itself these are leakage flux and the flux that links with both the windings these dotted lines throughout the laminated core that is the mutual flux or primary flux and these uh, dotted uh, you know um, these oval shaped they are the leakage flux okay so in practical transformer there will be leakage flux and also in practical transformers there will be eddy current and hysteresis losses produced due to the alternating flux generated because of the flow of alternating current okay so a practical transformer can be visualized like this laminated core primary winding secondary winding this r and x it is the primary winding some amount of resistance and inductance this r2 x2 r1 x1 r2 x2 this is for this secondary winding okay not pure inductance some amount of resistance so here in this video we are going to discuss about practical transformer in no load condition no load impedance connected so in that condition what happens let us say ac supply is connected across the primary winding we have this r1 x1 here here i have not drawn it for simplifying the diagram this is the same as this practical transformer r1 x1 is there here so this is a rl circuit so because of that a current i subscript o flows through the primary winding this current produces a magnetomotive force or flux this links throughout the both the primary and the secondary winding induces emf e1 induces emf e2 as per faraday's law of electromagnetic induction and this is the whole principle but here while drawing the phasor diagram there will be some difference with respect to the way the primary current and this uh, uh, supply voltage they are with uh, in comparison to that of this phasor diagram for ideal transformer this is for ideal transformer for practical transformer the phasor diagram will be like this okay this this will be the phasor diagram so before discussing the phasor diagram let us discuss the phasor diagram for a rl circuit we have already discussed this you can check this video but here i'm just going to explain in a quick way this is a rl circuit we have resistor we have inductor this is the voltage drop across the resistor this is the voltage drop across the inductor rl this is the current circuit current this is the alternating voltage v is equal to vr plus vl simple kvl so first we'll draw the phasor diagram for vr and i then we'll draw the phasor diagram for vl and i then we'll combine it so taking this current as the reference phasor this this is the reference phasor this vector i we know that for purely resistive circuits the voltage drop across the resistor and the current they are in the same phase so here vr is equal to ir and i they are in the same phase no phase angle between them vl or the voltage drop across the inductor is simply the product of the circuit current and the inductive reactance we know for inductors this is given by inductive reactances j omega l where j is the imaginary component 
Voltage drop across the inductor VL is I into J omega L where XL is the inductive reactance which is J omega L. So because of this J VL it leads the current by 90 degree. Okay, we have the sign convention plus J minus J and uh, in the imaginary axis so same here VL because of this plus J plus J this factor it leads I by 90 degree so we have got VL with respect to I VR with respect to I we have got both the vectors VR and VL now just we have to apply KVL and here we will perform vector addition triangle law vector addition the resultant vector V will be this joining these two vectors from tail to head this is V and I where the total voltage V is leading I by phi where phi is greater than 0 but lesser than 90 degree in between that for R and L so the same thing will happen in this practical transformer at the primary side it will happen at the primary side where we'll visualize R1 and X1 as this RL circuit so for that this primary current I0 flowing through the resistive inductive combination this R1 and X1 this R plus JX combination a primary current will flow and it will lag behind this supply voltage B1 by phi where it will lie in between 0 and 90 degrees C this is the phasor diagram first this is the flux phi vector this is V1 this is the same for all the phasor diagrams V1 will lead by 90 degree and V2 the output or E2 they will be lagging behind by 90 degree for V1 and I0 it is the same as this V1 is lagging uh, sorry leading I0 by phi0 same as we did here for RL circuit okay same here for the practical transformer V1 and this I0 primary current R1 X1 which flows through I0 is flowing through R1 X1 so here also I0 will lag behind V1 by phi0 where phi0 is greater than 0 but lesser than 90 degree remaining things are all the same here this I0 or the primary current can be resolved into two parts IW IM IW is I0 cos phi 0 this is called as the working component or the active component it is what contributes to the iron loss the eddy current and hysteresis loss it can also be resolved to another component in phase with the flux which is IM IM which is the magnetizing component this is what contributes to the mutual flux okay the mutual flux this flux phi this is what con uh, contributes to that so the magnetizing component contributes to the flux where I m is equal to I 0 sine phi 0 okay now this R 1 and X 1 because of this the voltage drop across this impedance combination this impedance is very negligible so V1 and E1 will be almost equal they will almost be equal but in opposition as per Lenz's law that is the transformer property the induced EMF E1 will be opposite to V1 as per Lenz's law but because of negligible voltage drop they will be equal almost equal so here you see V1 and E1 they are equal in magnitude but opposite in phase as per Lenz's law now as no load is connected at the secondary side the secondary induced EMF E2 and the output the secondary output voltage V2 they are equal E2 is equal to V2 ok so here also in phasor diagram E2 is equal to V2 and as per the transformer property whether we are using a step up or step down transformer this will change e2 by e1 is equal to n2 by n1 which is equal to k so this is 
the property of the transformer whether it can be a step up transformer k greater than 1 or step down transformer k lesser than 1 so here we have drawn for a step up transformer so you can naturally see e2 is greater in magnitude than e1 but it is equal to v2 okay so you you it is not uh, if you are a beginner to electrical machines it will take some time to understand these things it will it is not that at the first go you will understand everything so it will take some time so practice drawing phasor diagrams for different circuits and go through various uh, you know any material that you can for ac circuits and uh, phasor diagrams and then you will understand these things okay so this is the phasor diagram for a practical transformer under no load okay so here we have discussed about practical transformer under no load okay so i hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel engineering tutorial for more such videos related to electrical electronics instrumentation and communication engineering have a great day thank you very much